I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I'm working on today. I live, work and play on Birupai country and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. It all began with systems theory, the theoretical framework for understanding the function and interaction of systems within the field of biological and cybernetic sciences. The development of systemic therapies evolved from the principles of wholeness, organization, and dynamic conception of reality, all of which are viewable within the studies of how elements within a whole system, for example, components of a computer, communicated, influenced, and related to one another. From viewing biological elements or cybernetic components in relationship to one another through systems theory, early schools of family therapy adapted the concepts of how individual elements process information termed the feedback loop and the impact or effect on the whole. The Milan School, Salvador Minucci, Murray Bowen and Virginia Satir were some of the very influential names around family therapy and early forms of systemic therapy. Systemic therapies seek to address people in relation to others by understanding the interactions, the patterns and the dynamics of people within the groups, within systems, with the main goal being to affect change within the functioning of the whole system or group by altering the transactional pattern of the members within the systems. Systems of people relate to couples, families and social influences. And this means when addressing an individual's needs in a systemic therapies relationship, external factors of influence and the impact they have on the individual are considered. Systemic therapies treat the whole more so than the sum of its parts. So in a family setting, this looks like addressing the relationship patterns of the whole family rather than addressing the individual with the problem. Systemic therapies extends beyond the family context and addresses other living systems, including businesses, organizations, education systems, politics, and communities. So we're going to take a look at how I kind of interpret systemic therapies and how I integrate that into um, my everyday experience. So systemic therapy is looking at it uh, from the family and beyond aspect, because for me, it's not just about the family. It, um, our family is the whole system. So the family is the whole system, the system as a whole. Um, it's not only what's happening within the family system, though, that impacts the family system. So there's more to it than just what's going on in the home. Yeah, so um, my family system, we have mom and dad and we have six children in the whole family system. So my interpretation, my understanding of the family system and systemic therapies is that our first subsystem within the whole system is the relationship that we have with ourselves. The relationship that we have with ourselves is the first subsystem. I'm required to have a healthy relationship with myself in order for me to impact and influence those within my life, within my whole family system as positively and as constructively as I possibly can. The relationship with self is the subsystem. Then we have another subsystem of the couple or those, you know, the married, the partnership. And that's another subsystem. My experience is that how we feel within ourselves impacts those subsystems. It impacts those relationships. So, which is why I put the relationship with self at the top of the list. So we have those subsystems of relationship with self. And then we have the subsystems of relationships within uh, the partnership. And then we have the subsystems of parent and child. So mom has a relationship with every single child. Dad has a relationship with every single child. And those relationships and those subsystems 
have an influence, are impacted by what's going on on the individual level and on um, each subsystem relation as well. <clears throat> we also, as you can see, have a many, many, many subsystems in here with sibling relationships as well. So we have the subsystem of sibling to sibling, how they relate to each other, how they interact with each other, the impact that they have on each other is a subsystem of the whole family system. We don't end it just with the family system and if everything is nice and neat within the family system, then everything is going swimmingly. We need to cross over these, this boundary, this border of the family system and begin to take into account um, other subsystems that are formed outside of the family home, outside of the family system. So those subsystems look like a child and their friends. Um, the, there's a subsystem within the relationship of finances, perhaps with dad. Um, we can also have cultural and other social relationships and subsystems come into play as well. So an example of what's going on outside of the home and how it impacts and influences inside the whole family system would be something like this. So one of the children has a friend and the friendship has fallen out. The child then has a internal struggle within themselves. They have been impacted internally and the subsystem of the relationship with self is breached in some form. So the child then comes into the home and there's a challenge. We're presented with some kind of um, unease, some kind of dysfunction, some kind of dis-ease because of the outside influence of a friendship breaking down. Within that context, we then need to come across to child and communicate with said child in, an, in a way that allows the child to know that A, they're safe to communicate clearly what's going on so that we can um, develop ways, develop the understanding and develop the ways to create ease, psychological ease, um, and move through and process whatever is happening on the outside of the whole family system so that the relationship with self isn't damaged and so that the impact that the child has on the siblings, on the parent relationships and dynamics isn't heavily impacted or influenced in a negative way. We don't have enough time to dive deep into how systemic approaches apply to society. However, I can quickly break down the overall view like this. If we look at the town as the whole system, we can determine the health and well-being and the functionality of the whole system by reviewing the town's data on homelessness, suicide, poverty, crime and the welfare of its Indigenous communities. If rates are high in these areas, this points to a failing in the system as a whole to provide communication, information, services and supports that will aid in effective interventions that promote not only individual health and harmony, but that of the town system as a whole. No matter what the context the living system is in, systemic therapies addresses dysfunction and promotes change through prompts and nudges for people to work together on developing new patterns and new organisational structures that allow growth to take place for all.